Again, great to get out and get a different opponent than playing each other each and every day for our kids. It was, like I said, it did a nice job in the game. Uh, again, there's things we have to improve on all three phases, but overall, I thought uh, really impressed with our special teams. Thought our coverage teams did a really good job. We kicked the ball well, and uh, on our uh, like kickoff and punt teams and covered, had great lane discipline, tackled well in space, converged on things, won a field position battle there. Our returners did a really nice job, had a nice kickoff return that got us out good, had a really nice punt return that set up a score, uh, did those things very well. Unfortunately, we had a, a little protection issue on a field goal. We'll get worked on and get fixed. Uh, but overall, I like the effort, the tenacity, the way the guys played on special teams. And, you know, that's a, those hidden yards and those are big factors in the game where you start and where you stop, you know, I mean, you know, where the other team gets it and where you can start on offense. So I thought we did a nice job. We're going to have to continue this week as uh, Miami's a very good special teams team also. I um, thought defense, we did a great job of taking air out of runs, fit well, tackled well, kept leverage on the football. I think one run bounced. Uh, a couple runs inside, spit one time. We we get, we had a gap. Uh, we just got two in a gap. The one the touchdown run. We got to get that fixed up. But the other part, I thought I did a real nice job. Covered well. Got inside on some quick game early. We got that fixed. Uh, played the ball. Judged the ball well. Got an interception. Got good pressure. Uh, you started getting better pressure as the game went on. They were maxing up and getting really quick throws, which is hard. You got to get your hands up, bat balls in, and contest balls. Then we got pressure at the end and got a nice pick that set helped to get points and, and where we were there. So good job there. Offense, we did a nice job. Offensive line did a really nice job. We had time to throw the ball. We had clean pockets. We had we could drive the ball down the field and give us a lot of space to be able to do the things you want to do. You can draw them up all you want, but if you don't have time and space, it doesn't work. And our guys did a really good job making calls, twists, passing off things, back picked up blitzes, tight ends was involved in protection. And we got the ball out. When they didn't, when they had unblocked defenders or people I uh, got through. I thought Connor did an excellent job of buying time, you know, stepping one or two little steps away by just a couple feet to be able to get the ball out. His hands are really good and was still accurate with the ball and got the ball to playmakers. And because you got to be able to play under under pressure and when blitzes come, I thought he did a real nice job there. I thought running game, we did a nice job up front. Uh, good job in short yardage, goal line situations, getting hats on hats. The maturity up front, our health and our maturity and our experience, leadership up front really starting to pay off. As I say, a lot of guys last year had never started games. And uh, like I said, we didn't have Bryce till I think game five or whatever it was last year. So uh, then we got hurt. So having him in there was really big. The young guys with, with Nabu and Dewberry and Trey Zoon and, and of course Layden. I thought Layden was excellent in the game. Thought he played really well. Uh, Basantis having his first start, crown over got in, played really well getting uh, Deuce Fathery back in the mix and, and some of them. And then you got Moko and Aki backing up, coming in. So our depth and guys, uh, the experience really showed in the game, in my opinion. We had clean pockets to throw the ball. And that's, you know, uh, uh, so you can draw all these plays you want up, but you got to be able to have time to get them off and be able to run the football. And they did a nice job of that. Receivers were excellent in the game. Got open, created space, caught the ball, had the yak yards, uh, made contested catches. Uh, and that the backs, I thought, ran well downhill, got in holes, caught the ball, pass protected. And uh, you know, we, but there's still things we got to get better on. I mean, we got to continue to grow in what we do and and uh, what we keep executing. And we got a really good opponent coming this week, Miami. Mario Cristobal is a very good coach. Uh, they're very their offensive lines a very big physical group. They ran the football extremely well in the game against Miami of Ohio. Uh, receivers they got they're big guys. Guys in the slot seven can really play. Gets open. Uh, the big guy can really make plays down the field. He got speed. Uh, quarterback's an experienced guy. Been around a long time. He was a front runner for the Heisman a year ago coming into the season. Can throw the ball, do all the things you need to do. Uh, defensive line, Leonard Taylor up front, as good as anybody. Kitchens at safety. The backers, the transfer backers they've gotten in from Washington State and Louisville can run and make plays. <clears throat> Along with what they already had, Harvey's up front. They got a great transfer from Purdue. A defensive tackle is electric and twitchy, can make plays. Uh, secondary, they, get, they bring you know different looks, uh, pressures. Transfer, you know, uh, corners that come in there, Porter and, and Brown and those guys, they're coming in there. And, of course, uh, you know, they got Williams also in the secondary, too, and it was a five-star guy that's a really good player. Punters, excellent punter, hits it deep, 43 yards, I think 43, 44-yard average. Uh, return, they were second in the country in kickoff return a year ago. Uh, same guys back uh, in that way. So special teams, they're a great team. We're going to have to play well on the road. It's going to be a great challenge, and we have to have a great week of practice to be able to get ready. Questions? Down front, Brent. Josh DeBerry is a guy where the portal made an instant – difference for you. Could you take us through the process of evaluating a player like him who's played four years at Boston College and say, okay, we want to bring this guy on board? Yeah, I mean, it's just like you're doing a recruit and a value. I mean, where does the value come? And you got to understand the difference of portal guys, especially when they only have one year. Can they make an immediate impact and how much impact can they have quickly? Do you think they have that ability? And then also, 
Is he a guy that, all right, if he doesn't become the starter once you get to know him, not just evaluating him, is, is he content, okay, if I'm still playing and getting playing time? you got to judge that personality because you only got a one-year window with him. I mean, there's a personality clause in there as far as not a clause, but like a ability, you know, where he's at and, and it, does he have the ability because sometimes they have there's still the adjustment time. But that guy was very mature. The production he had on film, the way he played, and which we, we thought was an excellent player, could play nickel, could play corner, could play different places, and was very physical, really good tackler. And he was a guy that we loved on film. How is your linebacker, uh, J.D. Davis? Is he okay? Yeah, he should be good. He, he's banged up, but, I mean, he'll be fine. Staying down front, Travis. Yeah, yeah with, with uh, DeBerry, what was it that separated his game from the other guys, the options you had to, to start him? Just consistency. It, 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 here's what it said. When you get to saying starting – who's starting, who's not, it's generally consistency. That's what it gets down to. Football's not a game, can the guy do it? How many times in a row can he do it? Can he, you know, can a quarterback throw a deep ball? Yes, can a guy, but how many times does he read and do the right thing? Can that corner do what he's coached to do each and every time? And know him in all the different situations, scenarios, down in distances, how does he play? You know, and other guys will continue to play. You know, there's other guys in there that will want to continue to grow and we're going to need before this year is out. Hopefully, you know, probably this week. But the consistency is what it was, and I think that comes from his experience and maturity and who he was. And then Sim Matthews talked about going through the waiver process through the fall. From your perspective, how did he handle not only having to go through fall camp, but then the, the stress of that? Like he handles camp. everything else. I mean, just full out go, attention to detail. I can't say enough good things about Sam Matthews. Is a I'm talking about as a person, as a player, without a doubt. I mean, how the effort he gives, but just who he is as a person, what he stands for, and that's part of being a 12th man too. And the, the, the ability to respect the players on our team have for him by how he does the things he does in his world, you know what I mean, and the way he conducts himself. And, the, and it just, that's Sam. He going to handle things first class, right way. I got it. I'm going to go full speed, and I understand what I got to do. But while I'm waiting on here, I'm going to work my tail off, and however it comes out, it comes out. I mean, just a selfless human being and a great guy to have on his team. And, man, he had a nice him. He made some really good plays and blocks. And even tackles he didn't make, he affected who made the tackle on special teams. Did a great job in the game. Coach, we'll go back behind the lights on the left side. Tyler? Yeah, Jimbo, I mean, Miami ran the ball a lot yes. um, last week. I mean, I'm sure you anticipate that maybe being the same case. And, and do you feel like you guys have made the necessary steps um, that you'll be able to slow that down? And, well, we'll find out. I hope so. No, I, I mean, I like our, de I know our defense and the way we're playing. we got good guys up front and physicality. But, listen, that's a different opponent. Miami's a – is a very good opponent, and they know how to run it. Mario's a line coach himself. He's going to have those guys ready to run it, and then you guys still got to play the play-action passes and the things that are always going to come off those things. So it's going to be a great challenge. I mean, they have a, their back is very good. I'm telling you, he does a great patient, strong jump cuts, leverage, power, runs, catches the ball. They have very good backs. The line is big, and, I mean, they're really big up front, physical, how they do things. It's going to be a heck of it. It's going to be a, it'll be a, a physical game inside right there. So we're going to have to win those battles, we gotta, and we got to get them on the ground. I still getting their backs on the ground, but they still going to throw the football. Their quarterbacks are really good players, so you can't leave their guys in one on ones all day. So, it's going to be a great challenge. Down front here, Cole. Jimbo, we know that Crownover is eventually going to be one of the biggest stars of this team, but you got to see Chase and Mark be able to have good reps with the offensive line. What did you think of the improvements there? Really good. I mean, I thought those guys played really mature. I mean, you know, last year, like I said, we started our first game off. We had a true freshman center because we lost sixty one. Then we had. We were going to play Alabama, and Cam Dubery had to make his first start there. Then you had to go uh, against Florida, and Nabu had to make his first start there. So all those trials and tribulations paid off for us now, getting those young guys and, you know, getting in, in the game and doing the things they did. And when able to get him in the game, the first game was even better. But he had been in camp and playing well. But, again, until the lights come on and the scoreboard counts, it's still different. And it was growing. He, he, there were some things he's got to continue to do and grow better, but I thought he handled the overall – Situation just like York. I mean, that's, that's going out there and making calls on defense. I mean, right off the bat, you know, and even Ruben Owens getting quality snaps as a running back with the multiplicity of a blitz team that, you know, you got to pick up blitzes and do things. I mean, those things are hard, man, for a true freshman. You know what I'm saying? And we had a lot of them playing last year. So those trials and tribulations are, are paying dividends now. And then just based off the early film study that you've seen so far, have you noticed a difference between the play calling last year from the last offense coordinator of Miami to the new offense coordinator in Shane Dawson? Well, one game's a hard – that's a hard judge. You know what I'm saying? I, I, there's no philosophical – I mean, they're still going to be very similar, you know what I'm saying, I think, because I think Mario, what he thinks and what he does, and Mario's an excellent football coach. But, it's you know, one game is a hard sample to, to judge from. You try to judge where they come from and, <clears throat> and all that. But, you know, you may not do exactly what you're doing where you came from, because your talent level or whoever you're trying to get the ball to, you know, is it receivers, is it backs? You know, like last year, our best player was a chain. 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, as far as just trying to – he had to get certain touches. You know, this year it's different guys, and that changes for a coordinator coming in. So that can that can be different. But so it, that's – I appreciate you making me nervous again for first game. See, second games aren't much better either because you only got one game – you only got one game scenario to go. I, at the beginning of the season, you chase – you got to be careful not chase ghosts. You know what I'm saying? Because you just – there's so much unknown until you get it on tape and on film. As a coach, we worry about all those things. Coach, we'll go back behind the lights on, or actually right in front of the camera. Yes, Chip. Jimbo, piggybacking on that, you, you've coached against Miami quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Different players, different coaches, I get all of that. But do you see a common denominator when you, when you prepare f oh. for this team? Athletic, strong, physical, tough, competitive. I mean, a typical Miami a Miami team. And knowing you're going down there and you're going, you're going into, the, into the Orange Bowl to go play. I mean – it's a heck. It's fun as heck as an opponent. I mean, if you like to be a competitor, I mean, you got to because they're going. Fans will be tough. They'll be brutal. They'll be banging on the bus as you're coming through the lot and all that good stuff. I mean, that's what gets you up. But that's part of it. But this and the way they play and who they. It's like they just have the same players and just switch uniforms year to year and switch the names. But I mean, always going to have great players, man. Great program. Coach, stay behind the lights on the right side, Ben. Coach, uh, just following up on the transfer discussion. How do you go about? You know, I know you have to evaluate all the high school recruits as well as you mentioned. But as far as Guys in the portal, you know, a guy like DeBerry's played four years, you know, all ACC performer, but then you also get guys like Jade Walker and J.D. Davis. So I'm curious, just between all the levels, how do you, how do you kind of go about allocating all that and really finding out which ones to pursue? Yeah, that's why I got so many people hired up there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and I joke about that. You do. I mean, you have to have people who, all right, they, they so-and-so is getting in the portal. Where's that film? Where's that evaluation? Where's that critique? And you don't – like, it's not like – an NFL guy, you, you, I mean, think about all the players that are out there. You can't just like, go evaluate all these guys. I mean, you, you can, how much time are you wasting? How do you, how do you know who's getting in a port? How do you know what I'm saying? And that's, that's the hard part of this whole scenario. And then get him evaluated quickly, see if you want him, see if he's something to fit in. And it's hard. And then you got different levels of football. You know what I'm saying? That is a very challenging thing, and that's why it takes tons of people to have that resource to be able to get the film and get the, you know, get the, get the job done and get it to us and let us make a choice or uh, an opinion on whether we want him or not. And that is – then you're still recruiting freshmen, sophomores, juniors. That's, that's one of the reasons we're building the new facility we're building, to be able to have rooms and, and, and equip that way from the people to do it and the facilities to do it to be able to stay on top of that. That's, that's a huge challenge. And one of the reasons, as a head coach, man, you're on it 24 hours a day. It's a, it's a different different world today. Second row on the right, David. Jim, how did the linebackers grade out, in your opinion? Uh, well, I thought Coop played well downhill fast. I think he had one missed tackle over on the sideline, then Walter come inside and, and got that. I uh, thought he tackled well, played well, fit. thought he read well. Keys were well. And then sometimes you know, linebackers can make plays, but, you know, not always fitting it right. But I thought York did a really good job in his keys, his discipline, his calls, had no issues fitting things. I uh, thought Martrell, he flashed at times, and, and it can be a really good player for us. And then the young guys come in and did a good job. So I mean, they, had a, they had a solid game. And, and one of the reasons our guys up front, control things that made it a lot easier. I mean, it makes it a lot easier on them if that front can be disruptive. Can you speak about the wide receiver room and how selfless they are? Because one day it might be Noah, the next day it might it's be got, Evan. That's what you want. Here's what you got to understand. I mean, I've had teams where I had first rounders across the board, okay? These guys, when you got if you don't have talented guys where everybody can get theirs if they're one-on-one, -on -one, you're not going to be – it doesn't work that way. This is the – this room here is one of the first one we've had to just – I mean, across the board it, okay, my matchup's here. My match, and that's what we, we're allowing it to do. Now you can – the matchups, you know what I mean? You, all right, if he's one-on-one, -on -one, he can get it. If he's one-on-one, -on -one, he can get it. If he's one-on-one, -on -one, he can get it. And that's, that's the way you got to be able to do that. And they know that if that guy's going to get his, guess what? It's going to come back over here because people ain't going to sit there and let you just keep catching balls and balls and balls, you know what I mean, or next game they're going to plan for it. And that's why you got to have those guys. And I tell the guys, be patient. It's a whole season. It's all going to come around. Everybody will eat. You know what I'm saying? And then the ability to run the football. Your touch is back there. Maybe a throwing game. Next game, all right, they're going to play cover two and, and drop six, seven, eight guys, and you're going to be able to run the football. And that's why your skill level, and that's what we've improved so much on it, I think, across the board and our depth to be able to do that. And that's what makes it fun to play quarterback. And then when you're blocking guys, it makes it real fun. Left side, second row, Carter. <clears throat> and I'll say, I mean, to make the point, who was very unselfish in that game was Anais. A guy who's been around a long time and had his big days, and he had a great day, had a great punt return, had a big catch. But how many little things he did in that game for us in, in that slot blocking and getting fitting runs and opening things up for the other guys. And, and if he gets his, he gets it. But did a great job of being a selfless player in that game. Good question. Carter. Uh, Jimbo, when you look back at the Miami game last year, how different do you think both teams are? And is there really much to take from that game, you think? Oh, yeah. You look at personnel, you, can you take everything from that game. 
I mean, you're, that's the same guys playing. Your personnel is who they are physically, who they are, how they play in games. I mean, you're still that guy, and hopefully you can improve. And uh, hopefully hopefully we're better, and I'm sure they're going to be better. They look better, and I'm, hopefully we're better. You know, we'll find out when we play and, and what we have to prepare to do. But you definitely can because it's still the same personnels. And, yes, you know, part of this game, we get caught up next no, but judge the person doing it. What does he do? What does he do well? How is he physically? Is he a speed guy? Is he a change of direction guy? Is he a contact downhill, whether it's a back or, you know, all those things you can still take from all that. And then with Tyler Van Dyke, when he had such a great season in 2021 and then what happened last year and having three different coordinators, how hard is it to evaluate him and know what to expect from well, him? Well, you're, you're still judging talent levels. I mean, that, and that's all you can change. You know, see, nobody – and I say that, me on the film watching the other side – it's hard to truly evaluate a guy till you know what he's coached to do. It's like when you guys write an article. You can write what he did, but you really don't know who's right or wrong because you don't know what, the, what right or wrong is. And I'm not being – because you don't know what he's been told to do. Just like a coach watch – no different me watching film. All I can judge is his physical skills, maybe decision-making skills and how he hangs under pressure or different things like that. But it's hard. And this guy, you know, he's been productive. He's played great. And sometimes you get – if you're not, if you're off just a hair, sometimes it takes you that way. You know, make you have an off year, but you see it all the time in the NFL. Guys come up and down. I mean, or he might have been injured. You don't know about. You know, what I mean, as are things that are not out there. So until you know how a guy's coached, it's hard to ever judge him. But you can judge his physical skills, and he's very physically gifted. Second row on right, Olin. Uh, Jimbo, uh, obviously, everybody wants to get off to a fast start in the game. In your opinion, is it is it more important to get a fast start on the road, or does it? The way you start, does it even matter? No, it does. I mean, if it, if it didn't, we wouldn't try to. <laughs> and, I, and I joke about that, but it's true. I mean, you, you want to get it. Here's what I always say. Fast start doesn't guarantee you win. It guarantees you confidence. that You know you're in the game and you can do things and get going. But a slow start can also put you behind the eight ball and make it very hard to climb up that hill. And you, and you always seem like you can never catch up. So it's always better to start fast. But then the other thing is, can you keep your foot on the pedal and keep rolling too? There's, there's two edges of that. But – I think getting fast starts gives you confidence, especially when you're on the road in a hostile environment that things go. But, yeah, exactly. What was, uh, what was working for the run defense? Why was it you, – you touched on it earlier. but what was See a little, see a lot, see a lot, see nothing. Had great eye discipline in the game. Fit our run, kept our keys, stayed simple, and it's act like it's some magical formula. The, the, the keys to success when guys play well, guys, it's so simple – your article would be over in two lines and you wouldn't have nothing else to make up and write, okay? You'd have, you have to – the rest of it would be fictitious. And I joke about that when guys play well and they don't – it's so simple about when you're playing well and where your eyes are and your discipline and your keys and your reads and you're seeing it. You know what I mean? They say they're seeing it. You know what I mean? They're feeling it. But they're, they're processing the information. And we did a great job of formation recognition, got the calls. That's why I, say I was so happy with York, getting, his, getting the right calls, the formations. And that keys guys in earlier – to make sure they're, all right, now, this is my call. This is what I'm in. My eyes can get here. I got an extra two or three seconds before the play maybe that I can trigger and get focused in. I'm not, as I say, you know, running up to something and catching. I'm just catching glimpses of it. I mean, getting those calls, the, the, what you don't understand sometimes till you do it is the, just like you do it in our, the experience matters. It's like now, people say, you know, our offensive line, a lot more experience. Guys been through it. Quarterback's been through it. Receiver's been through it. Back, so they get calls. They get to the line of scrimmage. All right, they make a coverage read for an extra two seconds before the ball snap that allows them to make a better decision when they're running a route or the quarterback to make a better decision. And I think when you're getting lined up and making calls and doing things, the experience matters so your eyes can get to where they got to get to to process the information to allow you to be a good football player. Because I don't care how much ability you got. If your eyes are in the wrong place, say – Shut your eyes how many balls you catch. Shut your eyes how many tackles you make. Shut your eyes how many reads you make. I mean, that experience in getting lined up, our guys really, I thought, did a good job. I know it's a, a hidden thing that's not talked about, but that's how you play well, getting those calls, getting triggered, and getting in the right place. I know that's boring, but that's a fact of life. Mark, you wrap us up down front. Uh, Jimbo, kind of playing off of Olin's question, wanted to get your thoughts on uh, the performance of Walter Nolan from Saturday night. I'll tell you what, I just, I just tapped in. I just saw him coming through the locker room right mm -hmm. there, man. Really made some consistency. Uh, made, it was a great tackle. I got talked about the one time they had a ball that got thrown out in the flat and our linebacker he cut back inside. He's chasing inside out, makes it for a three-yard gain right there outside the numbers. There was a play on there, man. One time he got cut, which you don't want to get cut, but he got cut. He hit the ground on a cut play, on a zone play away, and he hit that ground. And, I mean, it was like I saw him. It was like he was a rubber man. It's like, boom. I mean, he hit for a guy his size to hit the ground on all fours like and come straight back to his feet and kept running 
and then makes it is in on the tackle for a one yard loss or a one yard gain. I can't with something right there. Just the athleticism and the and the ability and also the pursuit to get cut and say, okay, man, I'm, my leg has got cut, that hurt. I'm laying on the ground. His maturity and, and those guys are they're 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 growing. You know what I'm saying? And his ability to run and he's disruptive. He can rush the passers an inside guy and he's learning the physicality of his hands. He's just playing better and better. I, I thought he played an excellent game. I really he, he was disruptive and productive at the same time. All right, coach. Thanks for your time. Thank you, guys.